All right, hi everybody. So today we're gonna to talk about two problems. Uh, first one being high pressure in a cooling system, and second, how to check if your EGR cooler is bad. All right, hi everybody. So my name's Ryan, and I own a uh, commercial truck and trailer repair shop in Canton, Ohio. I've been in the business, truck repair and heavy equipment repair for over 20 years now. I've also been an owner operator. I've been out there on the road, so I know your pain and everything else you're going through when we're talking about uh, truck problems and all that good stuff or bad stuff. So we put out a lot of videos about uh, truck repair, truck maintenance, and also a little bit about trucking business. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, then uh, subscribe and keep watching. Okay guys, so this is an EGR cooler right here. I'm gonna talk about what it is and what it does here in a minute, but I'm gonna start with a little story. So I had a customer come in and had high coolant pressure, which almost all coolant systems are pressurized these days. I mean, if you know how a pressure cooker works, when you raise the pressure in a confined space for liquid, it raises the boiling temperature, just like in a pressure cooker where you've got a pressure cooker on your stove, you raise the pressure to 10 pounds or, or five pounds or whatever, and you effectively raise the boiling point of the water to 230 versus 212. It's the same concept in a cooling system on any type of piece of equipment truck. Most of them are 13 to 15 PSI on most trucks, like most of your trucks out here are 15 PSI is where they pop off at and we'll start letting coolant come out out of the overflow. This video is brought to you by Motive, formerly Keep Trucking. Motive builds technology to improve the safety, productivity, and profitability of businesses that power the physical economy. If you are a fleet owner, Motive provides a package of wonderful solutions for you. Motive connects your fleet and automates your operations. Motive helps you to improve your driver's safety, offers a no-fee fleet card you can start saving at a pump. Motive helps you with ELD compliance, and you can get real-time visibility into the location, utilization, health of your vehicle, equipment, and assets. If all those sounds interesting, click the link in the description below and learn more about how Motive can help you with your business today. So anyways, I had a customer, he had a problem with high pressure. It was actually blowing coolant out of the overflow. So he took it to a Cummins dealer and they told him that the radiator was plugged up. So they wanted to flush it out and do all this other stuff. But the thing with that is, if you start thinking logically, if your radiator is plugged up and you have less cooling capacity, then you're gonna have an overheating situation nine times out of 10. That truck or piece of equipment is designed to run with a specific size area radiator. So if it's plugged up and you've got it reduced to 60%, your engine's most likely gonna overheat. So this situation, it wasn't overheating. And at the same time, this all happened there was some soot that came up into the surge tank you know the tank the big clear tank where you plastic tank where you fill coin system so there was a little bit of soot it wasn't a whole lot of soot so he brought it up and i took a look at it you know i thought maybe with high pressure you could on a truck and you got an air compressor it could be the air compressor pressurizing the system but a lot of times with that you'll have coolant or water in your tanks your air tanks as well because sometimes your air compressor is like a little engine it's got little pistons in it and it has a head and it does have coolant that flows through the top of the head to cool it because it gets really hot at first i thought it might be that then i kind of went back i took the egr crossover tube which will show a picture of that to describe what that is and that's going to be the simplest way to test for a bad EGR cooler here. So your EGR crossover tube runs from the EGR valve across on a Cummins anyways. This is off an X15 Cummins. It runs from the EGR valve across the valve cover and down over to your intake manifold. It's got four bolts in it, two on each side. You can take in a clamp up in front by the uh, valve cover. So you can take those five bolts out and pull that EGR crossover tube out there'll be a bunch of black soot in it, kind of like what this has in it. So you're gonna have all this black soot in it, which this is an excessive buildup, and I'll explain why in a little bit. But through your crossover tube, you'll have the same soot. So what you're gonna wanna do with that soot is take a knife or something, get you a cup, a little plastic cup, whatever you got, something that's clean, sanitary for the most part, you're gonna scrape some of that soot out with a knife, you know, get a good amount of it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix it up with about 25, 30 milliliters of water. And, and that amount is 
basically like a medicine cup that you get with DayQuil or something. If you got one of those cups laying around, you want about that much water, mix it up really well, you know, stir it around, however you get a whatever to mix it up. And then run that through a coffee filter or a paper towel to get all the large particles out of it into another cup where it's kind of somewhat clean, but it's still going to be gray or blackish. And then use some coolant test strips here and dip that in as the instructions say. And then at that point, see what your freeze temperature is. So on this specific truck, it, his soot in the EGR cooler was freeze protected to zero degrees. So that tells me that there's glycol, the liquid portion has been evaporated, but the glycol and all the other chemicals that make antifreeze, there were still traces of those in the soot. So that tells me that this is leaking. So now I'm gonna go in and kind of explain exactly what this does and how it fails. Okay, so this is an EGR cooler off of Cummins X15. These newer ones are later X's, X engines are round. The older ones were kind of a square, but they're basically do the same thing, same job, same connections. So you're gonna see you've got one connection here, one connection here, and then there's two on the bottom. So these two down here are for coolant. So this is where your coolant runs through. Now these ends here are for exhaust. So the exhaust comes in this side. So this is underneath the exhaust manifold. Your exhaust manifold's up here and there's a little 90 or 180 I should say that comes down off the exhaust manifold and connects to this end. Then exhaust runs through here and the coolant's supposed to cool down the exhaust. Then it comes up and goes through EGR valve and then it goes back into the intake manifold of the engine. So like I said, coolant runs in, in and out these ports here. So we'll do a close up here and you can kind of see how, what, what's inside this. So you can see down inside there, that's all pretty well nice and clean, shiny, and there's little metal tubes down there. So you can see those metal tubes on the, the exhaust side, which it's kind of hard to get in there with the light. So this side up here is going to be filled with coolant. Coolant's going to be circulating, and they're not supposed to mix, obviously. What happens is those little tubes that you see in there, they'll crack or break on the ends, and then they'll allow coolant to get in the exhaust and exhaust get in to the cooling system. So, I mean, when you're under a load, you get a lot of pressure on this exhaust side, and that can actually, like I said, super pressurize the exhaust system to where it's going to blow coolant out. And then you'll notice, you usually get black soot, that's when that plastic surge tank that you have where you fill your coolant at, it all turns black inside, and that's what causes it. The whole kit for these from Cummins, a little over 2,500, 2,600, and the whole kit comes with all your gaskets, because you, you gotta take the turbo off on the X15s and ISXs. I've done several of these, they take about seven or eight hours the time you do everything, fill the coolant and all that good stuff back up but it really not terribly too hard of a job to do. But if you're experiencing a high coolant pressure, you know, most likely there's only three things it can be. So and those three things are either one, your EGR cooler, two, your air compressor, or three, a head gasket or head itself, so three slash four. Probably out of all those problems, the one that I would probably want it to be, obviously you don't want any problems, but probably the easiest one to fix is going to be the CGR cooler because the air compressors are almost as much expensive as these are. And the way they got everything packed in around the air compressors seems like they're harder to get out than what these are. So if you're experiencing that trouble, simplest thing, get you some coolant test strips, take that EGR crossover tube off, scrape some of it out, test it like I talked about earlier in the video and check that. And uh, a lot of times that's gonna be your problem unless you got a head gasket issue. But mainly this is when you have high pressure without high temperature. So like I said, I have no idea why a Cummins dealer thought that the radio was plugged up and creating pressure. Because the other thing you have to take into account too is that there are different pumps in the world. Water pumps or cooling system pumps are non-positive pumps, which means they create flow, not pressure, which Realistically or logically, all pumps create flow. Pumps don't create pressure, valves create pressure. The way a cooling system pump works is that it made to create flow and it won't create pressure if there is a blockage. It's made to let that coolant bypass. So if you've got a plugged up radiator, it's gonna cause overheating along with high pressure. And that pressure probably gonna be caused 
by you know boiling coolant pressure other than actual flow pressure or restriction pressure so just because it's a Cummins dealer guys doesn't mean they know everything you would not believe how much stuff I have come through this shop where it's been at Kenworth, Freightliner, Cummins, on and on and on not just once but three four five times thousands of dollars and you'll come here and it might be a two hundred dollar problem I've had to happen I mean several times so just because it's a dealer Nothing against them or anything else. I mean, just because you're paying for Peterbilt, Kenworth, the Cummins name at a dealership doesn't mean that you're going to get the absolute best service techs out there. So, so be careful with that. And uh, like I said, try to find you somebody good that you can trust and rely on. Other than that, guys, uh, take those steps on board. Different things to check if you're having that problem. Appreciate you guys watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit the bell for the updates and like the video. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.